Good morning, church, and welcome to FUMC How and our online worship service for Sunday, January 3rd. This is Epiphany Sunday, and I want to, wel want to welcome you to worship today. My name is Zach Landis. I'm the pastor here, and I'm just so glad that you have joined us for this time in worship together. Um, a few things about before, before we get going. Uh, first, we are kind of back to having our two different worship options, our in-person as well as our online option. So we have multiple options for worship. We hope you're just staying connected. And if you are watching this video, I hope that you make this, um, this time feel a, like a worshipful time where you are connecting with uh, your Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Uh, but we are still watching the numbers. Um, we're watching numbers in our community in our county and and then in our church family and we're just uh, our goal is to stay open if we can uh, but we know that if uh, we have a certain kind of guidelines and perimeter uh, parameters about if we are going to close down again but just be careful my friends uh, i mean we have the light at the end of the tunnel with the vaccine coming out but we're still not out of the woods yet we're still in that tunnel so just Continue to be careful, continue to do the masking, social distancing, washing your hands regularly, and staying home, especially if you feel sick. Um, also, a few other announcements. Our Youth and K4J programs are back up after their Christmas break this week, and so those are on Wednesday night, uh, uh, starting at 6.30 to 8, I believe, is what both of, those t uh, both of the times are, or 6.30 to 7.30 on K4J. Um, our incarnation uh, book and Bible study that I have been leading. We took a few weeks off of that due to some uh, the high COVID numbers in our community, but we're going to get big, back at it soon. And so just stay uh, pay attention for uh, when we're going to be uh, getting back into that study. But as we begin our time in worship together, let us go to the Lord in prayer. So would you join with me in prayer? O God, searcher of all our hearts, you have formed us as a people and have claimed us as your own. As we come to acknowledge your sovereignty and grace and to enter anew into a covenant with you, reveal any reluctance or falsehood within us. Let your spirit impress your truth on our inmost being and receive us in mercy. For the sake of our mediator, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of, in, in the, unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
Now would you join us in our responsive call to worship? In Christ we are blessed. In Christ we are chosen. To live in the praise of his glorious grace. In Christ we belong to the family adopted. To live in the praise of his glorious grace. In Christ we are called to be blameless and free. To live in the praise of his glorious grace. All praise to our Lord Jesus Christ. Now would you join with me on our, as we affirm our faith together, we'll be using the Apostles' Creed. I'm going to have the uh, words come up over the screen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. Buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. For then she shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'd now like to invite you to our children's moment, the special time for our children. And so I hope that you, if you have children with you, that I hope that they are where they can see and hear the screen. But my friends, today is another, another special day. Uh, so if you've ever heard the song, The Twelve Days of Christmas, um, that is from Christmas Day to Epiphany, which is January 3rd. And usually the Sunday that falls closest to that is called Epiphany Sunday. So that's what today is. It's Epiphany Sunday. And what we celebrate this day is the, is the visit of the wise men. So we know that when Jesus was born, we have two different stories, one in, in Matthew and one in Luke, and they tell different, different parts of Jesus' uh, kind of story of his birth. Um, in Matthew, uh, or in, excuse me, in Luke first, you know, we get the shepherds, and, and they actually come and visit Jesus. We believe that actually happened in the manger. But if you see this manger back here, um, sometimes it's actually kind of a coming together of the two stories because over here we have the wise men. So these are the magi or wise men. And we, we kind of think there were three of them, but we're not for sure. We do know they brought three gifts. So that was gold, frankincense, and myrrh to baby Jesus. Now, were they actually at the stable where Jesus was born in that manger where the shepherds visited to? I'm not sure. I don't, we don't think so. But we do know they came to visit Jesus. And that's the thing that we celebrate today because we believe it happened after Jesus was born and, and it was a few days after, or maybe a month or so after. But we're, we remember that because it tells us a little bit about who Jesus is. That he didn't come just for the Jewish people who lived in Israel and, and who God wanted to save, God, who have been God's people all through the Old Testament. But God came for everybody. And so what the, what the coming of the wise men kind of signify or kind of tell us is that other people, other people in the world that were different religious backgrounds and different things like that have come and they kneel before Jesus and they call him the Lord, right? And so that's what we're kind of remembering today is that not only is Jesus our Lord, not only did the wise men come and visit Jesus and kind of give him honor like you would a king or a Lord or somebody who is really, really important, but it's also reminding us that Jesus came for everybody. And so that love, the love that God gives us, the love that God expects us to share is something that we're supposed to share to everybody as well. So that's what I want to remind you and kind of tell you about today on this Epiphany Sunday. But let us go to the Lord in prayer as we end our time together. Good morning, God. Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for the wise men. Help each of us spread your love to everyone. Amen.
Now I want to invite you to our time of prayer today where we lift our joys as well as our concerns up to the Lord. I'm going to have our current prayer list come over the screen. And just this is what our current prayer list is. If you'd like to add anybody, please let us know in the church office. We'd be more than glad to add them. And also if you have somebody that can come off, please let us know that as well. But these are all people who have asked to be in your prayers. Uh, please feel free to comment or uh, le- uh, leave us a message on Facebook or YouTube if you have anybody that you'd like to have added today. But let us go into the Lord in prayer, and I'll lead us through our pastoral prayer time, and we'll close the Lord's prayer together. But let us go to the Lord in prayer. O oh Lord Jesus, as we gather this day at the start of a new year, we feel as if we should confess to the one who knows us best. We know that we are chosen, that we are adopted children of God. We dare to believe that we are a part of your plan, that we were a part of your plan, conceived before the foundation of the universe. But have we really been living as God's children? Are we honoring our inheritance as heirs? We know that we are called, but we are so easily distracted. We know that we are loved, but we balk at the cost of true discipleship. This hasn't been the best year. We haven't done a good job of loving you and loving our neighbors. We've been so selfish this year. We have put our own desires and our own rights and our own wants above the needs of others. So forgive us, O Lord, for the many ways that we have failed you in this past year. And, O God, you have poured out upon us grace upon grace, freely given and in great abundance. And though we could never earn it and we really don't deserve it, you still give it to us. And all of our our, our sins crumble away. We are washed clean in the blood of Jesus, who is our Lord. So as we go forth into a new year, lavish upon us that that amazing grace again, that grace upon grace. Release us from those things that hold us back and help us to turn away from the idols that we have made and send us into a new year, into a new hope, a hope for a new and better year, a hope to live for you, to bring about praise and glory for you and all that we do. Be also with those whom we have lifted in prayer this day. And we lift it up to you in the name of our Lord Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture passage today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 2, verses 1 through 2. Verses, verse 9a and then verse 9 through 11. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem asking, Where is the child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. Then he sent them to Bethlehem. When they had heard the king, they sent out, And there ahead of them went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over a place where the child was. When they saw that the child when they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. Then opening up their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. May God add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and understanding of Scripture. Let us pray together. Lord, take my lips and speak through them. 
Take our ears and open them so we may hear your word for us. And take our hearts and our lives and fill them with your love. And guide us so that we may be faithful servants who are grounded in your word and love. Amen. So today we're finishing our Advent sermon series. It's also kind of our Christmas sermon series that's called Incarnation. It's following the book by that same name that Adam Hamilton wrote. Um, and it's a series where we've been looking at the meaning of Christmas, looking at the meaning of the Incarnation, about what it meant that God came in the person of Jesus Christ, that God put on flesh. And that's what we celebrate in Christmas. We celebrate this Incarnation. And so throughout this series, what we've been doing, how we've been taking a deeper look and understanding of the Incarnation, as we've been looking at the different names that the Gospel writers give to Jesus. So far, we've covered a lot of them. We've had four weeks. This is the fifth and final week of this sermon series. We've looked at the royal names of Jesus being Christ, Messiah, and King. We've also looked at Savior, looked at Emmanuel, and Light of the World. And so today we are finishing this series on Epiphany Sunday, the day that when we remember that the wise men came and knelt down before Jesus and paid him homage. They gave him respect and gifts. And we're looking at the name Lord. Now, there is a lot that happens between when Jesus is born in the two gospels and, and, and then this kind of story. Um, so there's a lot that happens in the birth narratives. Um, and the gospels that give us a birth narrative are both Matthew and Luke. They kind of tell us a different story about how Jesus is born. So they go about it in different ways. They have different audiences and different things that they say. Now, Luke tells us about this journey. Uh, from Nazareth to Bethlehem and about how the shepherds came and how about there's no room in the inn for them. And also afterwards, they tell us about Jesus' naming, his dedication, to the tent, uh, dedication at the temple, and also about his encounter with Simeon and Anna. Now, on the other hand, Matthew doesn't really tell us anything about that. There's no journey. There's no mention about, um, just, a, just a quick mention that he was born in Bethlehem. Nothing about the dedication but Matthew does tell us about this visit, about this special visit from wise men or magi from the east. And so Matthew's gospel is written, of course, to a Jewish audience. And so we know that, that that's why he throws a lot of what he throws into his gospel. But this part is one of the parts of Matthew's gospel where it's speaking to more than just the Jewish people. That God's salvation, that Jesus came incarnate to live in our world for, to bring us salvation. And it wasn't just for the Jewish people. It was for everybody. Now, these wise men or magi were more than likely astrologers. And that's why they saw a new star and could interpret its meaning. But they came from far away to visit Jesus, to give him honor, to kneel at his feet because they knew who Jesus was. They knew what his birth meant. They knew that Jesus is Lord. And so what does it mean for us to call Jesus Lord? It's an important title for Jesus. It's out of all of the other titles for Jesus that we've studied this far, this one is used more often than all of them. That out of all of those titles uh, in the early church and in the New Testament, Lord appears more than any others. It appears actually over 600 times in the New Testament uh, attributed to Jesus. Now, one of the earliest Christian creeds that was, it was a simple phrase. You know, we have the Apostles' Creed. You know, we also have the Nicene Creed, which are huge, long statements of faith. But one of the earliest ones was a simple phrase, Jesus is Lord. Now, Paul writes in Romans 10, verse 9, if you confess with your lips that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So this word Lord comes from an, kind of an old English wor a word that means kind of loaf warden or keeper of the loaf. It signifies the person who is in charge. And of course, it's translated from Greek and Hebrew. But our English word Lord, you know, means somebody who's in charge whether it's in a family, a community, or even in a realm. So when we call Jesus Lord, we are saying that Jesus is that 
highest person of authority in our life. When we say things like Jesus is my Lord and my Savior, we're basically saying that he is the person who I, who I honor, who I kneel down before because he has all of the, the authority in my life and I submit my life to him. Now, this move by the early church to call Jesus Lord also flew in the face of others who called themselves Lord in their day and time. Now, at that time of Jesus, Israel was under occupation by the Romans, by the Roman Empire, and they had Caesars. They had people who believed themselves to be Lord, and they called themselves Lord as well. And so it was in direct opposition to other people who called them Lord or other kings and people who expected their, themselves to be at the highest place of authority. And so throughout time, many other people have called themselves Lord, Lords too. But however, Jesus just isn't any other Lord, right? He's just not any you know, Lord of a certain area, right? Jesus is the Lord of Lords. He is the King of Kings. We believe Jesus is not just Lord of us, but the entire universe. That he is in charge. He is that highest authority no matter what. No matter where you are and no matter when you are. Now the main question for us today on this Epiphany Sunday when we remember that this, this journey of the wise men who came and who fell on their knees before Jesus to pay him homage is this. Is Jesus your Lord? It's not something that we should throw around lightly. Saying Jesus is Lord should mean a lot. Having Jesus as your Lord means that he's your master, he's your sovereign, he's your ruler, he's your commander, he's your king. This means that Jesus should be the highest person of authority in your life that no one else, no other king, no president, no parent, sorry mom, dad, nothing can come ahead of Jesus. So is Jesus really your Lord? Have you submitted your whole life and your whole being to living under his will? You know, as we start a new year, I want you to think about that. And if you have already committed yourself and you are living as Jesus as your Lord, you have not, you have not let any other idol, no other person, no other thing come in between you and Jesus, you are still fully committed to Jesus then I want you to recommit to Jesus this year. But if you said no and you're not sure, maybe you've gotten distracted and you've actually been following something else or somebody else as the highest person of authority in your life who you have submitted to, then I hope that you will turn from them, that you will repent. And then as we start this new year, you will kneel before Jesus once again, just like those wise men did, and that you will confess him as your Lord. Now, John Wesley, the founder of our Methodist movement, has uh, had a prayer that kind of does this for us. And I want you to, as we kind of close, I know this is a little bit of a shorter sermon, but with um, the things that we're going to do in the service with communion and stuff like that, I think it's kind of fitting. But I want you to help bring this new year by recommitting or by committing to Jesus as your Lord once again. So I'm going to have these words of uh, what we know as the, Wesley, um, uh, as the Wesley Covenant Prayer come over the screen now. And I want you to recite it with me as we remember that Jesus is our Lord. He's this person of highest authority who we submit to and whose will we live under. So let us join together in reciting this prayer as we close our time together. I am no longer my own, but thine. Put me to what thou wilt. Rank me with whom thou wilt. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed by thee or laid aside for thee. Exalted for thee or brought low for thee. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things let me have nothing. I freely and heartily yield all things to thy pleasure and disposal. And now, O gracious and blessed God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, thou art mine, 
and I am thine. So be it. And the covenant which I have made on earth, let it be ratified in heaven. Amen. Now I'd like to invite you, as we celebrate Holy Communion, to join with me in the great thanksgiving. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity and made covenants to be our sovereign God and spoke to us through the prophets. And so with your people on earth and all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, he gave thanks to you, he broke the bread, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, he gave thanks to you, he gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you, this is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice and union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. So pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and juice. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now I'd like to invite you to pause your screen when the screen goes black and it has the words for you to uh, have the communion and say that with one another. If you're by yourself, say that to yourself. But if you're with the group, say that to one another. And then, um, then unpause it after you're done taking your communion elements for the prayer after receiving. Now would you pray with me? Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery and which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Again, my friends, I want to thank you once again for joining us in worship and through and for watching this worship video if you watch this please let us know we we want to be able to put uh names to who who the the views are that's the only thing we're able to see is the the number of people who've watched it but we'd love to be able to know who watched it and when you watched it but my friends just a few uh, things about uh before we close um we did kind of make a decision uh, the leadership of the church to, to not, we were not able to pay out our, uh, the remainder of our uh, apportionments. And so we kind of been looking at the financials as we've been closing out 2020 and looking forward to a uh, closeout day, which is in a, in a week or so, which is the last day we can pay our apportionments. And we still owe about $11,000 on our apportionments and, and the leadership of the church, uh, just with the times and with the numbers and the COVID and kind of the current giving trends right now, uh, they just they just did feel that we were able to pay those out. And so I wanted to let you know about that decision. I, I mentioned it in our Friday email, but I'm wanting to let everybody know about that, that we're just not quite in a financially healthy place to be able to, to catch back up for and uh, pay out for 2020. Um, but we still need your generous support, my friends, for the ministries of the church. And so if you can give a gift, please give it um, to the church. You can do that online. You can also drop it off in the church uh, uh, mailbox through the mail, or you can just drop it off throughout the week here at the church. And so we're going to be back to kind of regular hours this next week. We kind of were shut down for a little bit the, uh, over New Year's and New Year's Eve and, and between Christmas and stuff like that. But we're going to kind of be back to our normal rhythms this past this next week. But let me pray a prayer of blessing upon our offerings today, but also a prayer of benediction as we close our time in worship together. Holy God and parent of us all, we have moved through this season of family and this Christmas joy, and we are reminded that beyond our earthly families, you have adopted us into your redeemed family. Through the saving, redeeming work of the incarnation, we have become heirs. So we give our gifts today, but we also give ourselves because it's the only fitting response to your adoption of us, your rebellious children. So lead us in your ways this new year. In, the, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you again, my friends, for joining us, and I hope you have a blessed day.